morning. online worship for King of Kings Lutheran Church in Ann Arbor, Michigan. My name is Marie Duquette and I am the pastor at King of Kings. It is good to be with you this morning. Uh, two things I need to tell you. Vicar Anna Taylor McCants, uh, a colleague who just finished her internship, is here to preach for us today, so I'm excited about that. And immediately following this service, I invite you to meet us on Zoom. Uh, for Holy Communion and conversation. If you do decide to meet us on Zoom, and I hope you will, you'll want uh, some bread, cracker, wafers, and something to drink, wine, uh, juice, water for Holy Communion. To join us on Zoom, the link is in our show notes. And to open the show notes, hit this. Come now, let us worship the Lord.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading, Amos chapter 5, 18 through 24, a reading from Amos. Alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. The word of the Lord. Tiny Mouse, I was just thinking about getting new batteries in my flashlight. But it's the middle of the day. It's sunny outside. Yes, it is. But I want to be ready in case there was a blackout. What's that? That's when the electricity stops coming into the house. And if that happens at night, we won't be able to see where we are going. Sometimes that happens when there's a big storm, right? Yes, it does. I will put new batteries in my flashlight so that if I bump into you in the kitchen in the middle of the night, I will know it is you. I think that in a little while, Pastor is going to talk about lamps that need oil. You mean the story about the ladies who were going to a wedding and some of them didn't think to bring extra oil for their lamps? Yes. Then when the bridegroom was late, some of the lamps went out. Later on, the bridegroom said, I don't know you. Maybe that's because it was dark out and their lamps didn't work anymore. Too bad they didn't have batteries back then. Yeah, too bad. We need to be smarter than that and be ready for storms and ready for Jesus. You know, the Bible says he will come back someday, but we don't know when. So be ready. Here. Oh, thanks. Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. 
but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourself. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning, church. I am Anna Taylor McCants, for anyone who does not know me or for anyone who has stumbled upon this video and is joining us for worship this morning. I serve as the vicar of St. Mark Lutheran Church in Ypsilanti, Michigan. As I am waiting to have my first call and serve as a pastor in the ELCA. Usually about this time in my sermon, I note what day it is because it's just so hard to keep up with the calendar in the middle of pandemic time. Can I get a witness? However, it's even more important that I talk about the calendar today. I never record my sermons on Sunday morning and today is no different. I am recording this video on Friday, November 6th. It's been a few days since the 2020 presidential election and ballots are still being counted in some states. That means that at the time that I am recording the sermon, we do not actually know who the president elect of the United States will be. It's very possible that by the time this video airs or premieres on Sunday morning, November 8th, we will have election results though. A moment ago, we heard the gospel of Matthew proclaimed and it ended with this. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. And I have to ask, how many of y'all, how many of us really, have kept awake for this election, or at least for its results? How many of us have lost sleep, either purposefully because we've stayed awake to keep looking at the numbers as they come in, or inadvertently because of anxiety related to possible outcomes? I know I am not alone in keeping awake. And if you have been keeping awake this right here is your permission, my permission to, to rest, to sleep when we need to. We know that from our story, both the foolish and the wise bridesmaids slept. So the point of this parable can't be to stay physically awake, especially when staying awake is to the detriment of our health. Sometimes to stay awake really means to be prepared. To us right now, so tired from a presidential election, 
so tired from a global pandemic that is growing more powerful than when it made its way to us back in the spring. So tired from social isolation. To us right now, being prepared might look like taking a nap and taking care of our bodies. Let's back up from our parable and our life for just a moment and get a bigger picture of where this story comes from. In chapter 24, the chapter right before this one, the disciples come to Jesus on the Mount of Olives, basically asking him for the signs of his coming and the end of the age. And it strikes me as interesting because Jesus hasn't been crucified or resurrected yet. I don't even know if the disciples have context for the questions that they're asking. Nevertheless, Jesus answers them with the rest of chapters 24 and 25. And he answers with this highly dualistic, future-oriented conversation about the second coming. Instead of saying the kingdom of heaven has come near, like we heard last week with the Beatitudes, he says the kingdom of heaven will be like. And again, it's not what we nor the disciples expected to hear. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. See, dualistic. Two opposing groups of bridesmaids right from the start. In the parable, Jesus said the wise bridesmaids were prepared with their oil to keep their lamps running but the foolish ones were not prepared or ready. And when the bridegroom was delayed, they all slept. Wise and foolish alike, they rested during the waiting time. Verse seven says, but at midnight there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. And the bridesmaids woke up and trimmed their lamps. I mean, how exciting. He's here, he's here, and there's going to be a wedding banquet. Only some of them are not going to be able to attend. The story tells us that those who were running out of oil said to the others, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But those with the oil replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. They did not say, you foolish person for not bringing your oil. You foolish person for being lazy and not doing your part. They simply said, there isn't enough oil for all of us. You need to go and get more. And as they went to buy more oil, the bridegroom came and left without them. Now, I find this odd. Isn't the kingdom of God about abundance? And doesn't Jesus tell people earlier in the gospel, Matthew chapter eight specifically, to let the dead bury themselves? Come now, follow me now. You don't have to prepare your home to come away with me. So why in this parable is there no abundance of oil? Why did the bridesmaids need to be ready? Why couldn't they just link arms and walk two by two to the banquet with the ones who had enough oil and call it a day? This parable leaves me with more questions than answers. But y'all let us not read this story out of context. This parable is meant to be read in conversation with the rest of the Gospel of Matthew. 
It's not meant to scare us. It's not included here to make us think that the bridegroom is going to close the door on us. For those of you that are familiar with rapture theology and other theologies that can be psychologically harmful, I hope these statements give you some peace. We read this parable and this entire gospel in light of who Jesus is through the lens of the Beatitudes of Jesus's very first sermon. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those who are persecuted. Blessed are you who forget your oil because you've had a long day taking care of your babies and you haven't had a chance to go to the store yet because life is hard. Blessed are you who show up to the store to make your purchase only to find out that those who have come before you have hoarded it all and there's no oil left for you. See, we think we know how to be prepared and be ready. But if we are harming our neighbor, are we really being followers of Jesus? If being prepared during the time after this election season and being prepared for a hard COVID winter means buying up all the supplies in our stores to be ready, is it really preparedness or fearfulness? See, in the parable, the oil dealers still had oil to sell. But here in real life, about seven months ago, there was no toilet paper or chicken or bicycles to be found in stores across our country. Was that preparedness for the bridegroom or fear for our future? being prepared in the context of the Bible and being prepared in our world today does not mean living in fear. So what does it look like? Being prepared is living in response to the gospel message, living in response to the grace God has given us, the mercy God has shown us through Jesus's life and death and resurrection. Being prepared is walking every day in a way that uplifts our God and our neighbor. Readiness is not checking off our list, putting our ducks in a row, saying the sinner's prayer, affirming our baptisms during confirmation and then walking away. being comfortable in love, living in love. This is preparing for the kingdom to come. And even if I am wrong about everything, and this is especially important in the wake of such a polarizing presidential election, even if I'm wrong about all this love stuff, the bridegroom, is the one who closed the door. The bridesmaids didn't. We are called to love. We are called to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We do not sit on the throne. We do not make the final judgment. Martin Luther said, even if I knew that tomorrow the world would go to pieces, I would still plant my apple tree. May it be so. May our response to the grace and mercy we have been given, may our response be to show that grace and mercy to the world. 
And y'all, I am preaching to myself here as much as I am preaching to anyone else. It's been hard to watch the fact that around half of the folks who voted in this election either seem to think that there is currently not a problem with or they're okay with the problems of racism and classism and misogyny and queer phobia in our country, all of these things that personally affect my family. But no matter the results of this election, we strive to be prepared for the long haul, for all of the delays that will come, to be prepared to wait, just like the bridesmaids waited and to be prepared to respond in love to the grace and mercy God has shown us. We continue in our Christian journey, remembering the baptismal promise that we are claimed by the one who created us. And just like Jesus, may our response to this promise always be to love to love especially those most vulnerable among us and to love even those who are hard to love. Amen.
One of the challenges of this time we are living through is that we are no longer able to come together and sing, especially for people of faith. The songs of our faith, our hymns, are inspiring. They literally enable us to join our, voice, our voices as one. They are prayerful. The Spirit right now calls us to think imaginatively about how we can still use our hymns uh, as balm for our soul and inspiration. Today, as our prayer, I'm going to read one of our hymns. It's called, Let Streams of Living Justice. Let us pray. Let streams of living justice flow down upon the earth. Give freedom's light to captives. Let all the poor have worth. The hungry's hands are pleading. The workers claim their rights. The mourners long for laughter. The blinded seek for sight. Make liberty a beacon. Strike down the iron power. Abolish ancient vengeance. Proclaim your people's hour. For healing of the nations, for peace that will not end. For love that makes us lovers, God grant us grace to mend. Weave our varied gifts together. Knit our lives as they are spun on your loom of time and roll us till our thread of life is run. O great weaver of our fabric, bind church and world in one. Dye our texture with your radiance, light our colors with your sun. Your cities built to music, we are the stones you seek. Your harmony is language. We are the words you speak. Our faith we find in service. Our hope in others' dreams. Our love in hand of neighbor. Our homeland brightly gleams. Inscribe our hearts with justice your way, the path untried, your truth, the heart of stranger, your life, the crucified. Hey, Missy, peace be with you. Peace be with you too, Jilly. And, and peace, peace be, be with you all. Thank you for supporting the ministries of King of Kings and Be Ye Lifted. As our presence continues to grow online, more people find us. We appreciate that you've continued to support us. And if you'd like to support our ministry, you can go to kingofkingslutheran.org. At the top of the page, there's a button that says Ways to Give. Click on that and you can find out more. Thank you for your generosity. And now receive this blessing. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad 
the blessing of God, sovereign Savior and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Mm -hmm. to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace to you too, Jilly. And, and also with you. you. <laughs> <laughs> you did it wrong. <laughs>
Good morning. Oh. <laughs> I'm just going into work, so I'm not doing blood, so. That's okay. <laughs> okay.